Hey guys, I'm Brutally, and today I'm bringing you part five of the top most terrifying backrooms levels. And this is November's edition. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all at the end of the video. So this level is called Backrooms Level Ohio, with a zero on the front and on the end. I'll explain that in a second. And it's classified as a class five survival difficulty, with it being unsafe, very unsecure, and infested with an entity. That's right, I said entity, not entities. So the level itself is massive. It's thought to be around the size of our Earth, and it even kind of looks like it. It's got houses and buildings and roads and bridges and things that look man-made, except it's all abandoned and cracking and broken down, and everything here looks like a massive post-apocalyptic war, like a battle or an end-time event just happened right before you got there. The ground is blackened and smoking in spots, and there are huge cracks in the ground that go down for miles. The roads that aren't completely destroyed have road signs and street names that are in English, but with weird misspellings and errors. Like if a street was named Baker's Street, it might be spelled Baker's Street instead of just Baker Street. Or the word interstate might be spelled enter, like on your keyboard, interstate and so on. As I said, everything seems like it's completely abandoned, but it also seems like something big just happened. Like the ground is still smoking and is still burning in so many spots. And on top of that ground burning, the sky above the ground has an orange smoky glow to it, almost like it's on fire. There is no noticeable day or night cycle, and the sky and the ground level is always a dark, deep orange, like a wildfire happening, and you can also see ashes and embers floating in the air, and hear the ambient sounds of destruction and explosions and heavy machinery from the sky. Now, on the ground, among the buildings and stuff like that, there are also what looks like military outposts, except they're destroyed and abandoned and crumbling down. It won't take you long to realize what destroyed the society you're standing in because you'll eventually look up and you'll see them. The tripod entities. Now these are massive three-legged metal entities that have seemingly taken over whatever planet this backroom level takes place on. They seem to be using the planet to harvest its resources, like minerals and wood and that kind of stuff. They move around really slowly, but they do take huge steps on the way, and they seem to be sentient and like they have a brain because they purposely avoid big bodies of water or big canyons or something, so it seems like they're either being controlled or they're controlling themselves. Interestingly enough, there are actually a few tripods that have been taken down by whatever military used to be here because there's been some bodies found laying on their sides with huge holes in their metal casings. The only issue is that there's been no planes and no military weaponry or any military vehicle at all found. So either they've all been used or the tripods literally just destroyed what was left. Who knows? The entire level is a post-apocalyptic ghost town that feels like you're the only person in all of humanity left. It gives you the feeling that you no-clipped into someone else's World War III and you got there right as it ended and you're the last person to be alive. Now, as I said, this level is thought to be as big as Earth, but where people normally get no-clipped is near a city and surrounding the city in the countryside. There are some small resources in the houses that are outside of the city, like food and what seems to be some kind of drinkable liquid. It's almost like this level produces its own kind of soft drink, or this planet, wherever this is, makes its own different kind of soft drink. It's some kind of flavored water milk substance called Solzats, and it's been found in the broken refrigerators that are here. It's safe to drink, and it's described to have a sweet and salty taste with no carbonation, kind of like Gatorade mixed with milk. Now the food that's been found mainly consists of canned food, except it's not normal canned food like chicken noodle soup or something like that. It's like a turkey dinner in a can or summer dinner in a can. So between the Solzats drinks and the canned food, that leads many people to believe that this level is actually an alternate existence of the earth that we live on. But who knows? And as far as we know, less than three people have ever been sent to this level, and each one of them landed in completely different spots. One started in the city, one was near what seemed to be a beach or bay 
area, and one was in the deep wilderness somewhere. And because of those three different wanderers, we've been able to get a pretty accurate description of what the place looks like. And it is terrifying. The air itself doesn't seem to be toxic, and nothing is actively trying to hurt you when you're here, but it's still extremely dangerous for a ton of reasons. Obviously, the main reason is the tripod entities that are walking around collecting resources. You don't want to get stepped on, and sometimes they'll shoot one of their legs into the ground, and you don't want to be under that, obviously. But the other reason is the fires that are spreading around the level. These fires can become huge walls of fire and cover the entire parts of the level for days on end. So watch out for that. Also, since the buildings seem to have been destroyed or shot with something, lots of the ones left standing are about to collapse. So that could be a danger too. You don't want to have a building collapse on top of you. Now, as I said, this level is nicknamed Ohio after the only state sign that's been seen standing. And just like the street signs and stuff, it's spelled wrong compared to our Earth. Now, our Earth obviously has two O's, but this Ohio is spelled with zeros instead of O's. And that's why it was named Ohio. It's a pretty fun nickname for an absolutely gut-wrenchingly terrifying place. Now, to enter this level, you have to have no-clipped through a tile floor somewhere, or find a collapsed house and no-clip into the rubble. In fact, the first wanderer that ever came here was just looking through the remains of a collapsed house when he tripped and he no-clipped through the ground and he woke up in the burning city here. To exit, you have to find a body of water outside of the city and outside of the suburbs, like a pond or a river or lake, and jump in it and no-clip through the bottom to get out. And this exit was actually found when that same wanderer that got here first was trying to outrun this massive fire that just blew up. And then he jumped into a river to swim away from it, sank to the bottom, touched the bottom of it, and then was sent to level 11 after. Now just imagine for a second, if you will, walking along a tile floor level and then falling. And not just, you know, getting back up and walking away, falling through the floor into this desolate apocalyptic level and then seeing a place just like Earth burning to a crisp with giant tripod entities walking around. I don't know though, sounds like just another day in the backrooms to me. Backrooms level 266 is classified as a class 3E environmental danger and is unsafe and unsecure and its main danger is not from entities but the environment itself. The level actually looks like a giant floating mass of roots and sticks and trees. The trees are really thin and they don't have any leaves on them or anything like that and the forest area is actually the center of the level. And as you wander further down from that forest, the steeper and more declined the landscape gets. Kind of like if you were standing on top of a giant ball and started to walk down the sides. It gets so steep eventually that it just drops off to 90 degree angles. The forest is also always covered in this fog and it's really hot and humid and it stays around 36 degrees Celsius or 96 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really hot. Since it is so hot, it is recommended that if you do come here, bring almond water so you don't go insane. However, you probably shouldn't come here and you'll figure out why very soon. This level is actually a pretty important connector level because it connects level 166 to level 11. So you could technically be on level 11 and then skip 155 levels, you know, which is pretty cool. It's only problem is that it's hard to get here successfully and you shouldn't come here because of the dangers of this environment. If you walk down the slopes of the forest as far as you can, you'll eventually get to the edge where you can see a bunch of roots hanging down into the void below. And these roots have some pretty weird things about them. First off, they are way bigger than the trees that they come from, which is pretty strange. But the real weirdness is that they can move and contort themselves in the ground. This movement can cause huge holes to just open up in the ground, which is one of the biggest dangers here, because you could fall in them. And if you do find a hole, you can actually look down into it and see all the roots moving around and constantly shifting in the ground like massive snakes. Grody. The roots are actually dangerous for another reason too, and it's because if you put an object near or in one of those holes that opens up, the roots will then grab it and close themselves around it, and then eventually, whatever you put down on the ground will be sucked into the ground by the roots themselves. Like the roots will literally grab something and pull it through the ground into underneath it, almost like they're eating it or something. 
and probably the grossest thing about looking down at the roots into the ground through a hole is that you can see objects flowing through the roots that got sucked from the surface, like the people who are no longer alive, or entities that have been trapped and pulled under, or objects and stuff like that. You can see all those things being wriggled and writhed through the tunnels that these roots create, being covered and wrapped around by other roots. That's terrifying. Some of the items in the roots have actually been pulled out, but sometimes people try to rescue something or someone else and they get sucked in themselves and end up not making it. So don't do that. There's also been some pretty weird things and objects that have been found on the surface of this level. Like, really cryptic and weird things. Because in a pretty new area of this level that recently got discovered and was nicknamed the Outer Ring, there has been some really strange things on the actual ground, not sucked under yet, on the ground. For instance, this golden locket and this old shear tool. The tool had the word Tapiria stamped into the handle, and that evidently is some kind of bush looking thing. But why would that be stamped onto a pair of shears? I don't know. And who would leave a pair of shears there? And that golden locket is actually the really cryptic thing on this level. Specifically, the things inside of that golden locket. Like these two pictures of random people. One of them is not blacked out, and the other one looks like somebody marked the face out. Then there's this picture of a front porch of a house, with flowers hanging up and the lights on. Then a really weird looking row of orange trees that are glowing, which I believe might be from level 166. Then a random blurry picture that doesn't even seem to be of anything. Just a blur unless I'm missing something. Then the last three pictures that are on this locket seem to be from level 266 itself. But the very last picture is extremely unsettling looking because of how blurry it is. I can't quite tell what it is, but it kind of looks like someone being grabbed by roots because whoever took this picture, they must have been shaking when they did because it's blurry, so I don't know. No one has any idea who took the pictures or why they did it or what was the purpose in it, but it is very, very mysterious to say the least. East. Are the pictures of those two people, the family of the wanderer? Who knows? Is the picture of their house, their childhood home? Is the blurry picture an undiscovered backrooms level? Tons of questions and not any answers. Nice. Now Meg actually says not to explore this level at all because of how dangerous it is and no one should come here voluntarily and if they accidentally come here they need to leave as soon as possible and honestly I do not blame Meg for saying that because I don't want to get sucked underground by roots. To enter this level, you have to walk down the path of glowing trees on level 166, and you'll be forcefully no-clipped here to level 266. So yeah, I guess that wanderer did take the picture of how they got here. And to exit, you can stay in the woods until you find a random elevator sticking out of the ground, get in it, and then you'll be no-clipped to level 11. Or, sometimes you can find a rusty mirror leaning against a random tree, and then no-clip through that to be sent to level 148. But yeah. What do y'all think about these pictures? What do they mean, and why were they in the locket? Let me know your theories down below in the comments. So this backrooms level as a whole is classified as a class variable difficulty and is unstable and has varying safeties and varying levels of danger depending on where you're at. And I say that because the level is split up into two different sublevels so far and both of them are pretty much fully unexplored. All we have is a few pictures from a wanderer or two that have been here. So first up, we have sub-level 1, and it's so new that we haven't even named it, we're just calling it sub-level 1. But it's classified as a class habitable zone, and is very safe. But it is the only safe one out of the two, so don't get used to it. It looks to be a huge grass meadow that goes out for several hundred feet. The meadow itself is green and bright, and it typically looks like a spring day. There is a day and night cycle, so you do have to worry about getting cold sometimes, but that's pretty much all that's here that's dangerous. And there are only a couple of anomalous and strange things that have even happened here. The first one is that random supplies and objects fall from the sky and land in the forest. 
Now this forest is what's surrounding the meadow I talked about, and it seems like these objects just fall from nowhere, but some of them can be pretty useful. Supplies like tools and almond water and even wood planks to build stuff with. You just never know what's gonna fall. And that's all weird of course, but there is one more weird thing. You actually cannot noclip out of this sublevel. No matter how hard you try, you can't leave except one single exit, which I'll get into in a second. But the no-clipping effect just doesn't work. Now that's kind of like the green mist level that I went over a couple weeks ago. That level also doesn't let you no-clip either. So let me know in the comments why you think that you can't no-clip out of these levels. What does it mean? Is the backrooms breaking? Is it learning and getting more powerful so it doesn't let people leave? Who knows? So further out in the meadow, there is a concrete shack that has an open door on it. And the shack is actually the entrance to the next sublevel. Inside of it, there's a small manhole cover in the floor with one of those manhole great things on top that you have to open to go down. Now, you should not be going here because the next sublevel is easily one of the dangerous places in the back rooms and terribly more dangerous than this meadow area. But if for some reason you want to go, I'm going to explain it now. But around this shack, people have reported that they get weird senses of paranoia and overwhelming fear without even going in it. And when they're inside of it, they're kind of just overtaken with fear and paranoia. Unless you're insane, you shouldn't go in the shack. But if you do, you'll be sent to the next sublevel, which is classified as a class zone and is extremely dangerous. And currently, no one has left. Alive, at least. Now, this sublevel 2 area is an endless labyrinth of stinky, damp, dark, concrete tunnels that are dimly lit by old looking lights. Now, the tunnels are pretty much unmapped completely because they're so windy and curvy and they almost seem to change every once in a while. The halls are dotted with entities in some of the spots, and lots of them are actually unknown or undocumented entities. But of course, there are some normal ones, like skin stealers and death moths and facelings and clumps and hounds, you know, the typical kind. But if you run into any of those that I just listed, then you need to turn around and walk the other way slowly. Not like it's gonna help much, but you know, I'm just trying to be nice here. There's also a level exclusive entity here called the Puddles. And these puddles are made out of a thick black substance that will try to attack and detain people who walk by. The liquid is sticky and it seems to be sentient in a way. And it seems to be some kind of super creature that literally lives just to eat people. It's kind of like what the symbiotes look like from Venom, that kind of material. But yeah, it literally just attacks anything it sees, even other entities. But of course, there are other hazards in these concrete halls like partygoers and smilers, but typically these are only found deep into the halls in the glitchy warping areas, which eventually the halls themselves will just start to decay and get glitchy and warp and almost like an error message when you get too far into them. Now it's actually thought that if you do walk far enough into them, there'll eventually be no entities or puddles or any dangers actually. And this comes from a user named I am stoppable who posted this image to Meg authorities on August 8th 2022 that user claims that the picture they took is a safe spot that people are currently living in now the user has said that since they've got there the smell in this area has gotten worse and more sour and that the grass seems to be decaying and even the concrete walls around them are broken and decaying and are starting to show bricks instead of concrete which might mean that the bricks on the other side of the concrete is how you get to the next sub level but we don't know for sure. As of right now, there's just two that we know of, the metal and the concrete tunnels. No one knows why the tunnels are decaying and showing bricks instead of concrete, but some people think the level is on the verge of exploding or completely decaying on top of itself. So who knows? Let me know what you think in the comments. So yeah, as of right now, all we know is two sublevels. One is a nice safe meadow area, and the next is a terrifying concrete maze of hallways Full of entities and decay and sentient black sludge that wants to eat you. But yeah, that was Backrooms Level 1069. Hope you enjoyed it.
So, backrooms level insulation is classified as a class 4 difficulty, and is pretty dangerous to be honest. It's listed as an enigmatic level, which is pretty fitting, cause, as I said, makes no sense why it exists. The level is very large, and it's split up into several different areas. But overall, it's a maze of concrete floors with walls made out of insulation material and wood slats. The entire place smells musty and dank. Not like dank memes or whatever, like dark wet smell. Like, kind of like an attic after it just rained, or a basement after it just rained outside. Some parts of the level are light, and some of them are dark, and the places in between the light and dark is referred to as the limbo, and I'll get into all that in a second. The most common thought is that the insulation is between levels 3 and 4, because some of the pipes sticking out of the floor or ceilings here look just like the ones from level 3, but there are also sections that are tied to level 0, which I'll explain, and as I said, there are several different zones, which we'll get into right now. So area 1A is what we call the light areas. These areas have a similar shape of level 4, and the walls are made out of insulation with wooden slats holding it back. The floor is concrete, but it's not smooth, it's very very rough and coarse and cracking, and even broken in some spots. In this area and in other areas, there are dusty particles from the insulation floating in the air, and everything just feels itchy. Now the next area is area 1B, which has no light, but it's very similar to area 1A. In this zone, there are pipes that are jutting through the wall. They're also sticking out of the floor and the ceilings and pretty much random places. And they don't really have a pattern that makes any sense. In the roof of this zone, there are holes that lead to other strange parts, which I'll talk about later. But this zone is pretty much more unfinished and darker than the first zone was. Now the next part is called Area 2A, and this is really where stuff starts to get strange as if it's not strange already. This part has lights, like Zone 1A did, but the shape of this area is almost exactly like Level 0. Even the insulation in the wall is yellow, and not pinkish red like the other zones. So it's literally yellow just like Level 0's wallpaper. However, this zone also has random almond water bottles on the floor, and it's the only place in the entire level with any supplies. Now the zone after this is called level 2B, which is just like 2A, except it's dark. And it's more dangerous because the walls and the floor and everything else here is disintegrating and cracking. Now as I mentioned earlier, the parts in between those light and dark zones are called the limbo spaces. And these zones are very strange. They're glitchy and buggy and they don't seem to be normal space and time. Like it's not, it's not like you're walking through a dark hallway, it's like you're walking through thick air that kind of glitches you around and moves you places where you're not walking. Like you can just start going straight and then glitch to the left or to the right, kind of like you're in a game lagging. There's pretty much no information about this part, but all that's known is that it's just weird and you should avoid them. Now there's actually two more parts of the level that you're gonna wanna hear about because these are the strange, even more enigmatic ones. Now the first one is called the Crawl Space. And this place is so big that it could honestly be its own level, but it is connected to the insulation level. The only way you can get to this area is by crawling through the holes in the floor of Zone 1B. The area itself looks like a crawl space you'd see from real life. It's got concrete block pillars holding it up, a dirty floor, and insulation in the roof above you. It's thought that the area is infinite because no one has ever found an edge or anything that suggests there's a barrier. The crawl space is like the rest of the zones in that it smells damp and wet and it feels dirty and gritty, but there's actually an entity in this zone, unlike the other ones, that is extremely dangerous to human health and should be avoided at all costs. It's called the crawl space creature, and I'll explain what that is in a couple of minutes. The last zone was actually just found a few weeks ago, and for now, it's been nicknamed the unknown. There's literally no information about it, except for one photo that was taken by the wanderer who found it. If more comes out, I'll let you know, but all we can see now is that it looks like a claustrophobic space in an attic with lamps and candles, so who knows what that means. Now I'm gonna explain the crawl space creature. This entity is a kinda humanoid thing that's seven feet tall. It's got tiny back legs and two extremely long clawed hands on its front. 
It uses these long hands and claws to drag itself on the ground in the crawl space to chase its prey. Now, most wanderers are slashed with the claws before they can even see what happened. So it's hard to get a detailed description, but from what's known so far, it's thought that the entity can't see very well in the light, but it can in the darkness, and it kind of seems to navigate using sound, kind of like bats with echolocation, except a seven foot tall, 10 foot long creature with huge claws chasing you. Now it's thought that this creature can harvest supplies from somewhere and place them in dark corners of the crawl space to lure you there. So it's like it reaches up through the floor of the crawl space to the supplies above, grabs them, brings them down, and makes traps so that you would go there and get attacked. That's totally not terrifying. To enter this level, you have to crawl through a vent on level 4, and it's also thought that you can find an entrance in the roof of level 3, but that's not confirmed yet. There are three ways of exiting that have been found to work pretty reliably. The first and easiest is by just going back the way you came. You can also find a different vent in the wall or floor, which might lead to another level. And the last way, and the most hardest way, and the way that I would never tell you to do, is to go down into the crawl space and no clip through the floor. But that's not worth it, because there's a monster that lives down there that wants to eat you. Backroom's level negative three, or of light and darkness, is a very, very dangerous place. And dangerous is an understatement. It's classified as a class mirage difficulty for having psychological tor- reality warping geometry and deceptive influences and i'll explain what all that means in a second but pretty much it means that nothing is as it seems the level is located deep into the back room somewhere and it physically might be the smallest level ever found cut up into a bunch of parts in fact it's made up of a bunch of small cubicle rooms pretty much just small squares each of these cubic rooms has four walls, except the walls are not just material, they're mirrors. So all four walls in each room you're in will be mirrors. And the mirrors are facing inwards towards each other, which is creating an infinite reflection on all sides. Now it's not the mirrors themselves that make the level creepy, it's actually what you see in the mirror. When you're in the first cube, you'll see your own reflection, pretty normal. And you'll see that for the first few rooms at least. And the good news is, you aren't stuck in one room forever. But that's also bad news, because it just gets worse. Now to exit the rooms, you'll need to look for a part of the mirror that doesn't look completely solid. It kind of looks like it's waving water. And then you can just walk directly through it. And if you do walk through the mirror, you'll be sent to an exact copy of that same room. Except each time you do this, go from one room through the mirror, to the next room, you'll notice that the mirror will become more cracked and more imperfect, and you'll also notice something creepy looking back at you in the reflection. And it's not your own reflection at this point. Because as you get deeper into this labyrinth of cubic rooms, you'll start to see a more mangled abomination of yourself. Like a decayed zombie or skeleton looking back at you instead of your normal reflection. Each time the image will get more and more distorted and gross and ugh. Kind of like you're looking into a funhouse mirror from a carnival, except it's way creepier and creepier. It also doesn't really make any sense that you can see your reflection, because there's no light in the cube rooms. Instead, the light comes from the reflection itself. And since there's just infinite reflections, you can hardly tell where anything is. It's hard to find any depth perception. In fact, your brain will be so overwhelmed that you'll get terrible migraines and headaches. And on top of those migraines, you'll get confused and terrified and scared, which will eventually make you have panic attacks and, you know, you'll go nuts. So yeah, that's not fun. You'll eventually get so far deep into these small cubic rooms and these mirrors to the point where the reflections of you aren't even reflections. They act like their own entity and kind of move on their own. They almost kind of shadow what you do, except they don't move exactly when you move, and they look gross and disgusting, and they seem to just move around behind the mirror as they will. Of course, at first, you'll think that this is because you're going crazy, you're losing your mind, and you won't think anything of it. But as you keep going deeper and deeper, you'll start to accept that they're not your reflection, and that they're trying to hurt you. And at that point, these reflections will start to talk to you and verbally 
you. They'll sling insults at you. They'll give you false information. They'll scream at the top of their lungs. And keep in mind, this whole time you'll be trapped in different rooms with each wall being a mirror. So it's not like you can go anywhere. And sometimes these entities in the mirror will even convince the wanderer to walk to places in the floor that aren't solid and can be fallen through. So they'll literally walk you to a hole that you can fall through and hurt yourself. And if you do that, guess what? You'll land in another mirror room with more reflections. If you don't find the exit to the level, then you could be stuck in this infinite loop of small mirrored room with monsters looking back at you from the mirrors. So you're probably going to want to listen to the exit section. Now this is a quote from a wanderer that came here that they jotted down in a journal. The voice beckoned me to free it, repeatedly and desperately telling me, Please, you're making a mistake. Don't just sit there. Let me out of this prison. Don't end up like me. When I opened my eyes, I saw my reflection persistently slamming her blood fist into the wall to my left. The glass was cracking more with each successive punch, and I stumbled back in fear unprepared to confront whatever could step through that wall once it broke. However, I must have backed up too much such that I went through the wall. Into the same room, in fact. Though my rogue reflection was gone. My nightmares did not end there, unfortunately. All around me, I saw some mirror walls gradually fracturing. Even when my reflections on those walls displayed my same panicked expressions and conformed to match every move I made. What an adrenaline rush. I traversed this maze of mirrors for what seemed to be several minutes, running towards mirrors that lack visible cracks and just closing my eyes before I made impact. Was I escaping my own self or was it something else? So yeah, as you can see, this person is crazy. They're running away from their own reflection and this will happen the deeper you get to this level. To enter, you have to walk through a mirror that's not made out of glass on level 365 and to exit, it's pretty hard. You have to find something to break the mirror that you're staring at and hope that behind the mirror is a tiled bathroom or tiled room behind it. And if you see that tiled room, it'll be some kind of bathroom in a random backrooms level. And if you plan on walking through it, you better hurry because the mirrors here heal and fix themselves. So you have to be careful when breaking them because you don't want to hurt yourself and you don't want to be trapped. Just make sure you jump through it after you break it. Sometimes the mirrors can lead to nothing, just a blank void. And if you go through that, huh, no one knows where you go. So that's fun. So the broken backrooms level is classified as a class death zone and it has multiple environmental hazards that make it dangerous to even be in. The level really can't be considered a level because it's so fragmented and shattered and glitchy that it expands outside of what we would normally consider a level. It's just a massive wasteland of corrupted images, planes, data, and other things that our tiny human brains can't even begin to comprehend. Even though it's hard to describe, I'm gonna try it anyway. So the broken looks like a kaleidoscope, kind of, and it's extremely unstable everywhere you look. The architecture and the shapes here don't make any sense to our brains, and they don't follow the normal shapes and patterns that we know of. The terrain itself of the level is made out of broken, swirling matter. And you can actually walk on this terrain, even though it's glitchy and warping. But who knows how that's even possible. The level is very colorful and very vibrant, and the further you walk into it, the worse it'll get for you. Just looking at the spaces around you will make you start to go insane just from seeing what you're looking at. Just seeing everything crumble and warping won't help your sanity either. Now, some people call the broken a splintered plane of existence. Kind of like a reality that went too far and became so corrupt that you can't even tell what it is anymore. It became so digitized that it's not even real. The strange colors and shapes and movements and reality bending things are not the only dangers here though, because there's actually a noise that's constantly blasting full volume on this level. The noises are coming from literally everywhere, but it's like this amplified, disturbing, bass boosted sound that you could probably think of what it sounds like. I mean, just look at the picture of this level and listen to what you would imagine a noise would sound like there, and that's what it would be. There are also objects in this level that flow 
float through the ground and the sky, and they come back up and go everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. The wiki dot describes the level as a place that you can't even fathom or begin to understand because of how corrupted and how laggy it is. Ironically, there are actually structures here in the level as well, but the only problem is that they can change shape and are devoid of any actual material. They're just warped atoms, I guess. So you might see a pyramid or something, but then you can go right up to it and walk directly through it or glitch beside it and you won't even see it again. It'll just disappear. On the horizon of the level, you can see an effect that is kind of like that one from Minecraft when you're loading in new chunks of the world. So if you keep walking, you'll see the world build on itself, which must mean that this level has the ability to load new and infinite parts of itself, which is crazy. The newer the location, the more chaotic and broken it'll be. And for that reason, it's said that you shouldn't wander into this level at all, unless you're insane. Some people think that this level has some kind of relationship with the backrooms as a whole. A sort of symbiotic relationship. Like the backrooms might feed off of this place's unstable and hostile energies, and it might use those energies to create entities or other levels that we know about. Who knows? Now, some of the places found in the Broken kind of resemble other locations and levels and landscapes from other backrooms levels, and from real life, except these are non-linear, gross, conglomeration, glitchy things of that real thing. So there could be what looks like a city, but it's just warping and glitching and floating around. But again, that's all just a theory. A backrooms theory. Yeah, see what I did there? Others who don't believe in that theory that I just talked about believe that this place is just a bizarre, random, meaningless plane of reality that doesn't have a purpose or a meaning. So they pretty much think it doesn't mean anything. Personally, I like the first theory that the backrooms draws this dark, magical energy from this level to make other levels itself. But let me know your theories in the comments. Pretty interested to see what y'all have to say. If you, for some reason, want to come here, you want to avoid one thing specifically, and that thing is touching or making contact with any of the glitching fragmented structures. Because if you do that, your existence will literally start to crack and rupture, and then you'll start fading away. Like, you could touch one of those pyramids or one of those statues there, and just start decoding and not exist anymore at all, in any way. It's happened before, and it's terrifying to think about what that might look like. Entities that we normally talk about here on the channel, like hounds and that kind of thing, they're not seen here as themselves, and it's thought that they wouldn't be able to survive anyway, but there actually have been glitchy prism and shape looking things in the sky that kind of resemble entities. Maybe those prisms are like cocoons that entities are made in for the back rooms? Who knows? Now it's said that entities have been seen no clipping here by accident, just like people do, but those entities have seemingly transcended and melted together with the Broken's environment and have become these glitchy, warping, broken things that aren't bound by the laws of physics that you can see glitching around everywhere, and they'll just float and warp for the rest of existence. As of right now, no one knows the entrance or the exits to this horrifying level, which honestly makes it more terrifying because you have no idea how to avoid being sent here, and you also have no idea how to leave if you were sent here. Nice! But yeah, let me know your theories about this level in the comments. Is this level some sort of power location that the backrooms pulls power from to make entities and levels, or is it just another random glitchy corrupted level? Who knows? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Let me know which levels you want me to go over next. Check out my second channel, Brugly 2, and my third channel, Spoogly, for SCP videos. I love and appreciate each of you. Have a great day. Tell somebody you love them. Peace.